the AI is coming for us. It's definitely gonna take over all of our jobs. It's the apocalypse, I acknowledge that. But what if AI could help you lose a little bit of weight? That's what we're being told now. These conferences of different tech companies are coming together and they're trying to envision how we're gonna manage our exercise and especially our food in the future. And there is actually a role for AI. They were speculating at this conference that you could have a lifelong AI buddy that will help automate and tailor what you're eating based on preferences and needs at any given time. You could potentially link this not only to your food, help you to make sure that you have the groceries that you need, but also to fitness so you can track things and have it automatically modulate things over time. They're not they're not actually rolling this out, it's not coming yet. But this seems like the sort of thing, Sharon, that I could see coming. Is this an area, like I fully suspect that there's gonna be a lot of attempts by these AI companies who must know that there's a lot of people who are gonna react to anything that they invent with a lot of suspicion. If it can help us get in better shape, maybe that'll win over some people. What do you think about the idea of a, an AI food choosing buddy? And slam dunk, okay? The same people who are right now speaking out and writing articles against AI and how it's gonna be the end of all of us will do a complete, they will summer salt backwards, okay, <laughs> and drink this in. And when you say a buddy, it's so attractive because if you're talking about that friend that you can have for the rest of your life that'll hold you accountable, but that won't turn on you, okay, like Tamara on The Real Housewives or something, then I think everyone's in. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. this is your friend for life. I think everyone would be in and I get to look how I wanna look, a little lighter, a little prettier, whatever. I think it's golden. Okay, I was waiting for a turn. I thought I sent sarcasm, but you're actually back. Cuz I also think, look, there's probably there's going to be all sorts of issues of privacy and data mining and all that. But okay. I do think that something like this there will be a there will be an industry for, I think that people will like it. Um, but I do also wanna let you know that uh, the speculation about the future of fitness and diet goes way beyond that when it comes to tech. So in addition to that, they're talking about you being able to breathe on your smartphone for it to evaluate your diet and fitness. Seems a little weird, but they're calling it breath tech. It allows a deep level of insight into the foods you should be eating to provide optimal health and well being. I guess. Isn't that what a doctor is supposed to do? Man, we have given up on having a functioning healthcare system in America that we're just gonna be breathing into our iPhone and I guess that's doc now. But anyway, they go beyond that. Trends they're predicting include edible beauty product products such as anti-aging ice cream and the chance to dine from hormone balancing and dopamine driving menus. They're just gonna be drugging us in our food. Virtual reality dinner parties will allow consumers to create their dream dinner parties, which could involve eating with celebrities, royals and late loved ones at a favorite holiday destination or recreating food moments from a film scene. I'm gonna go with when Harry met Sally. No, does this not <laughs> seem like this is, this is quickly getting into Black Mirror. So hold on, am I the only person at the dinner thing and I'm hanging out with Jennifer Lawrence and Neil deGrasse Tyson or whatever? Or like, is it several of us and we're adding celebrities or the Royals in? Our past family members are there. I guess, I guess some people could like that, Sharon. What do you think about the, the future of dinner parties? Okay, well now you're getting in is a whole, you just kept going and going and going. I had not <laughs> considered all of that, okay? And who do I sue if I invite both Kanye and Chris Brown to a dinner party and one of them, you know, gets crunk? What, then what, okay? <laughs> because I think initially when you were just talking about a buddy, an accountability partner and losing weight, that was fine. But now we're into class action territory about five years <laughs> in, okay? None of this will be good for the greater society. It's like when we all picked up smartphones and started texting and did video calls and Facebook and all these other things and we stopped and people are like, no, I haven't physically seen you in years. We haven't heard your voice in like forever. It's like yeah. that kind of territory. I'm gonna throw one more thing out there. You let uh -huh. me know what you think about this. This is, I would, I would file this in the category of someone had an idea that did not require thinking about it for even a second. So for parents and picky eaters 
Virtual and augmented reality could further be used to trick consumers who are not keen on eating vegetables or other healthy food into thinking they're eating chocolate or sweets instead. And to that I say, what in the hell are you talking about? I get the concept that you could throw some goggles on and I could pick up like a spoonful of cauliflower and you can make it look like s'mores or whatever. But once I jam it in my gob, it's cauliflower. How are you faking out my taste buds to think that it's chocolate? You're just gonna have a bunch of kids who are very angry about the way that their parents have just manipulated them. It's bad enough when you tell them the plane's coming into the hangar and it's not actually a plane. But if you tell them it's a chocolate plane, it better taste like Hershey's. What do you think, Sharon? Or else, you know, there's a whole generation though. Kids are gonna be angry anyway. Okay, <laughs> who don't understand that there's real pizza crust instead of just the cauliflower kind, okay? That there's a whole array of things out there for you to experience and for your taste buds to enjoy. I think the biggest issue with trying to solve all of these um, problems, okay, is that what you're doing is you're, unless you can be sad sometimes, how do you know if you're happy? Yeah. Unless you can experience pain, how do you know it feels good? You know, it's called living life experiences. And for all of this that it's touting that it's giving us these things, it's really taking some really important things away. The human touch, the taste buds, what's real instead of the trickery. We have enough trickery, we really do. And what is this, an idea that you never really thought you didn't have to spend one second thing? It's a, that's a little complicated. I don't know if I'd feel accomplished in this world with a total AI takeover. Yeah, I look, I, I admittedly feel really torn. I am super into this sort of stuff. I mean, to viewers of the show, that's pretty obvious because we talk about AI on like literally a daily basis, AI or technology more broadly. But I, but I do also feel the same way. I feel this like growing like unease about where we're going. And, and I can't tell if like, like it makes me want to really double down and like try to remind people of physical things that you can do. Like, did you know that you can write words down like on paper? You can do that. Um, I play board games because gathering actual people around a physical space and moving things around as you talk with your mouth and hear with your ears is a thing that you can do. But like, I wonder, is this just, you know, old man John like pining for the good old days or is this no, or no, have we finally at last reached a point that we shouldn't cross? I know people have been saying that for you know hundreds of years or whatever. With every new tech development, it's this is this is too far. But I don't know. It really it really does feel like it's moving pretty fast. What do you think? I think you're exactly right. And but sadly, some people are already far gone, and they do see your board board games. I think you're playing. You're actually meeting with people and reaching out and writing things down. I don't know if you're using cursive, but that's very caveman mentality, I think people are saying. But I happen to believe that if we don't self edit, and that's the problem, because once it's there, we want to use it. You know, we just want to use it. If you don't self edit, though, and overindulge, who are you actually? Yeah. Who are you? I agree. I do want the buddy though. I want to try the Me buddy. Me too. Out. I'll just I think stop a lot there, of people yeah. are gonna like buddies. Yeah. And by the way, we're talking about like fitness buddies, but there are gonna be other sorts of buddies that are they're gonna sell a lot of them. By the way, <laughs> wow. I thought say. of that. We haven't real like. Isn't it interesting that we're months and months and months into AI? Like ChatGPT became a thing that most people knew about like late late fall, early winter last year, and it really hasn't gotten into that territory yet. Mm-mm. I'm not gonna be more explicit, but people out there, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's just weird. You would think that would be one of the first things they'd attempt to like commodify. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.